Hey, did you miss the council meeting Monday night? Well, here's the big issues you missed. First, we started the meeting off right with Boy Scout Troop 726. They're out of St. Anne's Catholic Church and they presented the colors and led the audience in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mayor Pro Tem Michael Granis presented Molly Herring and her daughter Peyton with a proclamation for the promised walk of preeclampsia. This walk, scheduled for May 16th at East Clayton Community Park, is to help raise awareness for a dangerous condition of pregnancy called preeclampsia that affects more than 20,000 births in North Carolina every year. Peyton was born at just 30 weeks, weighing only 2 pounds, 12 ounces. She is a miracle, and this walk is helped to help raise awareness about this dangerous condition. All right, next item was one that we've seen at repeated town council meetings, and that is the public hearing for Steeplechase, one of the biggest developments to hit the town of Clayton in years. It was once again delayed. Earlier in the day, the town received a letter from the owners of the property. It's about 631 acres on North O'Neill Street, and the developer, Wakefield Development, is proposing more than 2,000 homes uh, and apartments, condominiums on this property. Well, the letter from the attorneys for the ARP family notified the town that the contract to purchase the land had been dissolved. It had been terminated because the landowners and the developer could not reach an agreement. They asked for the item to be tabled for two months to allow the developer and the property owners to continue to work through the issues that are right now making it impossible for the developer to move this project forward. So town council voted unanimously to table the issue until July 20th. That's the July 20th town council meeting. Steeplechase now put on hold once again. There were three other public hearings that did move forward with no one speaking in opposition. Town Council approved Ravens Ridge, which is a 33 single family home development on about eight acres that is right next to the existing Riverwood Athletic Club off of Covered Bridge Road. The Town Council also approved Proctor's Place rezoning. This is a vacant lot that's on Main Street. It's less than an acre located between an apartment building and the Proctor's Place commercial building. There's a large church that uses that commercial space and they would like to use the parking lot for, they would like to use that vacant lot for parking for the church and that rezoning was needed to make that happen and that moved forward. And then Horn Memorial Church right next to Town Hall here. The church would like to change the zoning from residential to office institutional so that they could possibly connect or recombine the church building with the daycare and the offices and the playground that sit on those three tiny lots here next to Town Hall and Town Council went ahead and approved that rezoning. Town Manager Steve Biggs gave an update on downtown parking. He clarified the ordinances that we have in place to regulate downtown parking and he clarified that we do have regulations in place to prevent overnight parking in our public lots that we do not have anything written in our ordinance to regulate long-term daytime parking, and that also we have signs that mark loading zones in the downtown. However, those loading zones do not tell people that there is a 30-minute limit, and that is an option that the town council could take to try to help facilitate better parking in our downtown. Town council, uh, town manager Steve Biggs also let the town council know that the town had received a letter from Katie Smith. She is the owner of the former Red and White building there on the corner of O'Neill and East Front Street. Uh, she had received the $38,000 invoice for the demolition of that historic building that the town felt was necessary because it was a dangerous building and in deteriorating condition. Well, now there's a vacant lot there. We've asked for her to pay that demolition bill. Uh, she has in the letter indicated that she would like to be absolved of having to pay back that demolition fee if she hands over the deed to the property where the red and white formerly sat. Uh, the town manager had indicated that there was some private sector interest in that lot there on O'Neill and that he would prefer that the town allow that private sector possibility to come to fruition before the town considered taking on that piece of property as town property. 
Uh, the public comment session, we didn't have anybody uh, comment during public comments, but uh, Council Member Butch Lauder did ask for clarification as to the paving schedule in Riverwood, where developer Fred Smith Company has yet to finish paving in parts of that neighborhood. The town manager did alert town council that Deer Valley is the next section scheduled to be paved, and that should happen this spring. It was supposed to happen April, but it should happen next month. And that the next estimated completion date for the last section remaining in Riverwood to be paved, Beaver Creek, that is the townhome section, is scheduled to be paved with the final layer of paving in 2016. Council went into closed session for about 20 minutes and when they came out, they voted on several condemnations that were needed to obtain easements for various sewer and water improvement projects. And then the meeting ended at 745. Now you can always find the agendas for all of our town council meetings and these brief highlights on our website, townofclaytonnc.org.